Howdy folks, uh, Kathy Williams de Vries here bringing you the scale requirements for Trinity Guildhall uh, clarinet exams for grade 5. Um, what I'm going to do is slightly different to uh, what I did in the previous videos in that I will include the jazz clarinet stuff along with the regular clarinet stuff. I think that it's uh, even though you don't technically have to learn it for the exam, I think they're very good exercises, very good scales to learn, uh, especially um, if you come up against uh, some jazz elements in your pieces, which you probably will be by now. So I'm just going to go straight through the book, um, this scale book, as is written. Uh, so the following scales, tongued or slurred, at the moment um, I'm slurring everything, uh, just to get a nice sound and good legato. Uh, you have A, E, A flat and E flat major. C, F, C sharp and F sharp minor. You can choose either harmonic or melodic. I will do both. Also the chromatic scale on E two octaves and the pentatonic starting on C two octaves. Plus arpeggios of all those above scales, the dominant seventh in the key of G two octaves, and the diminished seventh. So we're first coming, we're coming across diminished sevenths for the first time. And then uh, the jazz clarinet stuff, um, using the tonal mode center either of low E or A, um, personal choice. I will do both, of course, as in the book. So we start with a C harmonic minor scale. Now C minor is the relative minor of E flat major, so um, you've got three flats. In uh, the harmonic minor scale, um, we have the augmented second between A flat and B. You want to, um, and you might want to put your fingers down the right hand to go easily. Um, I don't mind which E flat you use. Um, and you might want to practice going from the A flat to the B um, in the upper register. As you see, you have to coordinate a number of fingers. So the harmonic minor scale. I absolutely love melodic minor scales because uh, it's all uh, you get rid of the, the flats um, sharpen into naturals. Um, on the way down um, I would practice going from C to B flat. Uh, there is only one B flat you can use in order to get to the A flat and I recommend that you coordinate practice that a few times so that the fingers get coordinated. across that particular fingering in um, E flat major and also A flat and D flat as well. So the melodic minor scale. Now the C minor arpeggio uh, we're going to need to use the left hand C to, uh, in order to get to the right hand E flat. There is only one E flat down here you can use because we're coming from a C, you might want to coordinate that. And also, and a good coordination between the G and the C. your C minor arpeggio. Now on the next page uh, we have the C pentatonic. Uh, there's no, I don't see any dramas here. Um, you may want to uh, lean a little bit on the top A to get the C a bit easier. Uh, now 
we come to C sharp minor. C sharp minor is the relative minor of E major. So we have four sharps, F, C, G and D. Um, there is only one D sharp you can use down the bottom, uh, which is this one, because we're coming from the C sharp. So you might want to practice that to coordinate between the C sharp and D sharp. Uh, Note that in the sharp keys, um, that a sharpened B becomes a B sharp, which of course is a C. <laughs> Note that for the C, for the B sharp, you will need to use the right hand C to go to the left hand C sharp because you're then hitting a right hand D sharp. Uh, you may want to coordinate between the D sharp and the E and the F sharp and the C sharp. Uh, of course it's an A natural. Um, so. You also might want to go just to practice um, going around those fiddly throat tones. C sharp melodic minor, you sharpen the A sharp um, and you're going to a B sharp um, in the top octave. You may want to coordinate between the G sharp to the A sharp to get that really smooth. Uh, note again, uh, left, right hand B sharp, left hand C sharp, right hand D sharp. <laughs> then you have the C sharp minor arpeggio two octaves. Unfortunately, there is a major mistake in the particular Trinity Cottage book I've got in that they've actually given us C minor again. But C sharp minor you will have a C sharp and a G sharp. You might want to coordinate between the top D sh G sharp and C sharp because that is quite difficult to coordinate. So I really must write to Trinity College and get them to fix that up. Next on the list is E flat major scale, three flats, B flat, E flat and A flat. Uh, get coordinated depending on what E flat you want to use down the bottom between the E flat and the F. Also between the upper E flat and the F. the G are uh, the A flat to the B flat and note that a top E flat is simply a D with the banana key so flat major arpeggio you want a really good connection between the top B flat to E flat I suggest you take that out and practice it on its own now we come to E major scale um, the regular clarinet only needs two octaves, the jazz clarinet has two and a half, I will play both, although I do recommend that you learn the two and a half octaves because it will make the next stage a bit easier. So, E major scale, um, we need to start on the right hand low E in order to get to the left hand F sharp and right hand G sharp. That's the only fingering that you can use and similarly B, C sharp, D sharp, B, C sharp, 
Um, you want to coordinate nicely between the B and the C sharp and the C sharp and the D sharp and, and also in the top octave as well. So. <laughs> sharp can only be the one fingering because you're coming from a C sharp. Uh, e major two and a half octaves, um, much the same. <laughs> arpeggio um, there's only one E fingering you can use the left hand because you're playing a right hand G sharp um, but your choice as to the upper B <laughs> to keep it in the right hand uh, but you can use the left-handed B I find it a bit clunky um, now for the jazz clarinetists uh, the E major seventh arpeggio uh, only one D sharp you can use because you're coming from a B and you might want to coordinate that and also there's only one B you can use which is the left hand B to go to the D sharp we then have the Dorian scale on E2 octaves uh, so F sharps and C sharps there um, you might want to coordinate the E to the F sharp um, it doesn't matter which E or F sharp you use Personally, I prefer to use the left-handed one as much as possible. And the same with the B to C sharp um, when you put the register key on. So, and then the E minor seventh arpeggio, uh, two octaves. Um, Personally, I tend to use the right hand one here, right handed E and B. Uh, we then come to the Mixolydian on E2 octaves. Um, now, here again, right handed E, left handed F sharp, right handed G sharp, and same right handed B, left handed C sharp. Actually, it doesn't matter there's no D sharp in the upper octave but you might want to coordinate which I should have mentioned when you were doing E major scale so the mixolydian on E the E major arpeggio with the lowered 7th which is just E7 um, which uh, resolves into A major so again left handed E is the only one you can use although you have a choice of left or right handed B so and you may want to practice that a few times to get that really smooth so have for the jazz clarinetist the E pentatonic major scale two octaves again right left right down below um, although you have a choice up top and you also might want to practice the throat tone stuff <laughs> just to get it really coordinated around that difficult throat tone area so the pentatonic major scale you also have 
have the E pentatonic minor scale, uh, which you you don't have to worry about any sharps or flats because there is an F sharp in the key signature, but not in the scale. So pick any fingering you like. <laughs> come to E melodic minor scale uh, two octaves um, G, uh, C sharp to D sharp um, there's only one fingering you can use coordinate that from the B and also the octave above um, only one fingering right handed B left handed C sharp right handed D sharp So that the melodic minor and then you have the jazz melodic minor which uh, keeps the C sharp and D sharp uh, both up and down you start on any E you like sound for me I've never heard that before I've, I've never even heard of a jazz melodic minor scale but we um, we learn new things every day um, now E minor arpeggio with a major seventh uh, chord there's only one D sharp you can use uh, because you're coming from B and you might want to practice that and also left-handed B to go to the right hand D sharp only figuring available make sure that's coordinated but start on any low E you like. And again, I find that very... Um, I, I've never heard of these scales before. Um, now we've got the chromatic scale starting on the E. Um, I prefer to start on the left-handed E. Um, but of course, uh, going from an A sharp to a B, use the banana key. Um, D to D sharp, you can either use the banana key or the side key. F sharp, finger in F, and the bottom two trill keys. Um, and that's about it. So, the chromatic scale on E two octaves. <laughs> things we've got the blues scale starting on E uh, I notice there is an A sharp to a B again use the banana key which is this one here and I also note that uh, the rhythm you can use you can blues it up We then have a diminished 7th arpeggio starting on E. Uh, this is the first time this comes in. Um, a diminished 7th is one where all of the 3rds th are minor 3rds. Um, and um, so that uh, every 3rd every is a minor 3rd and you get um, 5 notes to the octave. <laughs> Remember that D flat is a C sharp. Um, I tend to keep the C sharp in the one hand, in the right hand. Now we come to F minor scale. F minor being the uh, relative minor of A flat major. So you have four flats. And um, 
Now, it is you can use whatever low F you like, um, but you might want to coordinate the fingers between the A flat and B flat because that is a difficult little. Um, it's a it's a difficult uh, little fingering. You want that really smooth, uh, and also practice the uh, augmented second between the D flat and the E. Now um, you do have a choice as to what C and D flat. I would just use the regular C to D flat, but make sure that the D flat to E is well coordinated. Now the melodic minor, again I love the melodic minor because it irons out those flats and makes them naturals. On the way down uh, you will need to use the left handed D flat because you're coming from the right handed E flat um, and you may want to coordinate the E flat to the D flat. <laughs> so that the melodic minor and you may want to play around with the throat tones. arpeggio you will need to use the left-handed low F so that you can get to the right-handed A flat. Otherwise it's pretty straightforward. You may want to coordinate the F to the C. Uh, we now come to F sharp minor. F sharp is the relative minor of A major. So you have three sharps, F, C, and G. Uh, you will need to use the left-handed F sharp to get to the right-handed G sharp. And again, uh, from you will need the right the uh, D sharp, this D sharp, because you're coming from a C sharp. Um, and then from the E sharp to the F sharp, use the two bottom trill keys. Um, and again, going from E sharp to F sharp, uh, you will need to use the banana key. So. Notice that I use the left, the right handed trill keys for uh, the F sharp melodic minor um, there's only one D sharp that you can use coming from the C sharp and here at the top I would just finger out the F sharp because you're coming down to an E so that's one of the only occasions I recommend that you use the regular F sharp fingering after an E sharp so <laughs> Forgot to mention that you will need to use the right handed B, left handed C sharp to get the right handed D sharp. Okay, gee, there are a rather lot of scales, aren't there, for grade five? Another, another three pages to go. Okay. And then we come to the F sharp minor um, arpeggio. You may want to coordinate between the C sharp and F sharp in both octaves. Because you are using rather a lot of fingers. You can choose which C sharp and F sharp you want. I prefer to keep it in the right hand. the dominant seventh in the key of G two octaves. Um, try and get a really smooth um, connection between the top C and the D. Because 
I regard that as the second break of the instrument because your first break is between A and B. And I say that the second break is between the clarion and altissimo. So that the dominant seventh you now have a diminished seventh starting on G please note that an F flat is uh, an E natural um, D flat I prefer, prefer to keep in the right hand bit problems. Right, come to A flat major, given that we've just done F minor, A flat major, uh, you want to coordinate really well between the A flat and B flat and E flat and F. Um, and also uh, D flat and E flat and F, you want to coordinate between that. In the upper octave, you will need to use the right hand C, left handed D flat, right handed E flat. So that A flat major. And can I also add there's only one E flat you can use because you're coming from a D flat. major arpeggio you will need to use the left handed C to go to the E flat and you want to coordinate that you want a nice coordination between all of the intervals because you're moving four and they all must move as one I think the A flat to the C is quite challenging do leave the right hand down major is one of my least liked of videos. And just excuse me for a minute while I um, pull my clarinet through. I'm getting a lot of water. It's very hot here in Brisbane. Um, I've got the air conditioning on and that, um, that tends to encourage moisture in the holes. In the keys. Okay, so uh, now A major scale. Um, got a nice big smooth connection between B and C sharp in both octaves and the F sharp and G sharp in the upper. And between. You want that really, really smooth. Uh, and you may want to play around with the um, throat tones. Just scale two and a half octaves for the jazz guys. Please note when you go from the B to the C, do not put the E flat key down, it will make your C sharp too sharp. So, what you need to do up the top is when you're coming down, is that you will need to take that finger off when you hit the C sharp on the way down. major arpeggio um, you want to roll between the E and the A and coordinate well between the E and the A. So now for the jazz guys um, you've then got your A major seventh arpeggio. 
You now have your Dorian scale on A, which is a lot like the A minor scale, except there's an F sharp. You then have an A minor seventh arpeggio. have a mixolydian scale on A with an F sharp and a C sharp. Which is actually just a D major scale. Starting on an A. I think something like that. Yeah, there you go. Um, you can also think about think of it like that. A major arpeggio with the lowered seven, which is an A7. Um, see if you can coordinate nicely between the A and the C sharp and the C sharp and the E. So and then you've got your A pentatonic major scale two octaves. Get a nice roll happening between the F sharp and the A. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, and bear with me, we've just got one more page to go. We've got the A pentatonic minor scale. Two octaves, fairly easy, no sharps or flats. We then have the A melodic minor scale, two octaves. Again, no real dramas there. You might want to play around with the throat tones. In the jazz melodic minor where the F sharp and the G sharp uh, stay for the whole scale. And the A minor arpeggio with um, the major seventh. You may want to play around with the E, e to G sharp. Just a gentle roll there. So. We now have the chromatic scale starting on A. Remember to go A sharp to B. I use the banana key. I use the, um, the side keys for your F sharp. Um, F sharp up top use the banana key and that's about it. So We then have the blues scale on A2 octaves. Um, your choice of D sharp. I would probably prefer to keep it in the left hand. I'll blues up the rhythm a little. Now you also have the diminished seventh arpeggio on A. Um, you may want to practice going from E flat to G flat and 
Um, and you, please uh, be aware you'll need to use the left handed C in order to get to the um, E flat. You may want to coordinate the G flat to the A and the E flat to the G flat. So. Okay, so um, that's your grade 5 scales for both clarinet and jazz clarinet for Trinity Guildhall um, scale requirements. Um, please join me for grade 6.